So we're now ready to uh, start thinking about to start thinking about how to compute the aggregate claims distribution. So last week we did quite some effort to to say, okay, if you look at the the CDF of a compound sum S, then you can see it with or you can express it with uh, the n-fold convolution of the severity distribution of X that, that you're using in this compound sum. But if you think about working with n-fold convolutions, then your immediately your immediate reaction uh, should be okay. That's not that's not easy. So it's definitely not an easy task to go along with this n-fold convolution. So what we are going to do in this chapter is we're going to launch a couple of approaches that help you to uh, get grip on the distribution of, of s and that avoid somehow uh, this, this calculation of the n-fold convolution. Because here you see at the bottom a couple of strategies that the risk modeler could follow. You could approximate the distribution. So that's a little bit what we've been doing in the exercise. Then you have, or in the exam question that we just discussed, then you get grip on the first and the second moment of S. And then you say, I don't care about its exact um, distribution, I'm going to use a normal approximation, or I'm going to use a log normal approximation, or whatever makes sense. And I'm going to match the moments, first, second moment, of my true distribution for S with the moments of my approximating distribution. So that's a strategy that is uh, sometimes followed. The second strategy is that you go for this analytic calculation, but then you cannot go um, around these n-fold convolutions. And then a third uh, approach that we want to mention at this point is that this Panier recursion, which we introduced in one of the previous chapters, I forgot the exact number, but uh, the Panier recursion that we introduced for one of the previous chapters, uh, we can also use it here. But do remember what was this Panier thing about? Well, in the previous chapter, we said you, you can use that if you're dealing with the distribution of a compound sum, but both the primary and the secondary distribution in our compound sum uh, construction had to be discrete distributions. And that was what the whole Panier thing uh, was about. So now we're going to see how can we manipulate that idea and that result from Panier. How can we use it here if we want to use a certain severity distribution in this compound sum instead of looking exclusively at compound sums where both primary and secondary distributions are discrete distributions, right? And the idea goes as follows. Well, suppose to begin with that your severity distribution fx, so that's the distribution of the xj's uh, that you're adding together. So that's the common distribution of those independent xj's. Suppose that this severity distribution is defined on a certain grid. So suppose that it is a discrete distribution. Well, then that's good news in light of the Panier recursion because then you can directly use the Panier recursion. Uh, so the idea that the way how you can picture it here is say you have some sort of severity distribution where the x is defined on a certain multiple as a certain multiple of some monetary unit for instance 1000 euros or 10000 euros something like that so you're going to approximate this distribution of, of x which is originally a continuous distribution with on the positive green line typical severity distribution so for now, we're going to pretend as if it's a kind of discrete severity distribution, right? Suppose that uh, the PK, and what I mean with that, it's the probability function of the number of terms in my compound sum. So it's the probability function of the N, uh, which is indicating the random number of terms in my compound sum. Suppose that that one is a member of the AB1 class. Why do we need that? Because that was underlying the Spanier recursion. You need a primary distribution that comes from the AB0 or the AB1 class. So what we can then do is we can write down the following recursive structure for the distribution of S evaluated in X. 
right? And we let this um, we let this x we let it go from zero to n huh? because we were working with certain uh, multiples of a certain monetary unit, say 1,000, 10,000 euro, etc. So what you recognize here in the expression, that's exactly what we had earlier on in chapter seven. But in chapter seven, we would have been using, instead of this fx, we would have been using the, the fk, say, that would be the probability function of the, the terms, the discrete, discretely distributed terms in our compound sum. We would have been using the, um, the f, j's somewhere here. We would be using um, a notation g uh, for the probability function of the compound sum s. And all the rest would be quite similar, right? So, so what you recognize here, that's I guess the point that I want to make, it's exactly what we put together in theorem 7.2. But we, the only thing we need to change is we need to make some notational changes. Because now we're working with an fx which is the probability function of my discrete severity distribution. And I want to adjust to that. I want to incorporate that in my binary recursion. Yeah. So no proof for that. Just be aware uh, you had the panier recursion out there, which was working to get a recursive expression, a recursive scheme for the compound sum distribution in case you have as the random number of terms in your sum a distribution from the AB0 or the AB1 class. And in case you have as the terms in your sum, uh, you've got these MIs, which are following a discrete distribution themselves. Yeah? So you want to recycle that result. And you can do it here by assuming that your severity distribution is, um, is in fact a discrete distribution. So is um, allocating a certain probability mass to multiples of a certain monetary unit. That's what we have over here. And then, of course, we once again want to make the point that if your count distribution for n is in the AB0 class, that then the first term drops. And so you're left with the panier recursion as you have it here on the second uh, sheet. We also discussed extensively in chapter 7 how you should initiate this, um, this um, recursion, yeah, the starting value, you should determine it uh, using the following relation. And once you have the starting value, you can get the recursion going and you can use this reasoning to get grip on the distribution of S via a recursive scheme, but under certain assumptions, independence assumptions, um, primary distribution from the AB0 class or AB1 class, and a severity distribution that is discretized. Any thoughts on this? So I know this is quite technical, but I hope you get the picture that we can recycle this result from chapter seven, yeah? So one of the things uh, we need to, we wanna think about in this, uh, in the remainder of today's class is how can you do this discretization? So if you have a continuous severity distribution on the positive real line, how you can you come up with a discretized version of this, um, uh, with this, um, I was uh, distracted by the question from Milou, but, but how can you come up with this discretization? Yeah, and Milou is raising a question in the chat. So what's the main difference with chapter seven? So um, do let me, Take one second then to explain it once again. So in chapter seven, we work with an S that looks like this. So it's a compound sum and I'm adding terms in this sum. But what is important in chapter seven that N is a discrete random variable, which is in the AB0 or the AB1 class. And then these MIs are discrete random variables themselves, right? That was the setting in chapter seven. We called chapter seven, I think it was about advanced discrete distribution. So this is purely discrete. 
But of course, as a risk modeler, you're more interested in looking, or you're often, I should say, more interested in looking at an S that is put together like this. Or now again, for the N, we have the same condition, but now for the X, we're modeling a severity. So we're modeling the cost of an event. So that's a severity. And usually the severity random variable has a positive, positive continuous distribution. So if we want to return to the scenario in chapter seven, then we should discretize the distribution of X. Because if we have a discretized version uh, of X, then we can do the pannier recursion right away. So how do you go from chapter seven to, from chapter nine to se chapter seven? We're gonna discretize. And then we have our pannier directly available, yeah? So I already announced uh, after the after the break, this is what we what we'll have to think about. So how can you do this discretization in a clever way? What are a couple of uh, ways to do that? So I want to say a few words about uh, that. Maybe one last point uh, before the break. It's a very technical point, but um, uh, let's just mention it. So what if this n is instead of a, a let's say a regular uh, plain vanilla uh, count distribution, what if this n would be a compound frequency distribution? So that means what if this n follows the compound frequency distributions, one of these compound frequency distributions that we launched in chapter seven, then it's still a discrete random variable, but it's, uh, it's a bit of a more complicated uh, version. So the recursive formula can then apply, can then be applied two or more times to obtain the aggregate claims distribution. Because if this n is a uh, compound frequency distribution, you can write its probability generating function as follows, right? So it's the probability generating function of the number of terms in the compound frequency sum evaluated in the probability generating function of the summons and the terms that you use in your compound frequency distribution. But that is not a problem because then, of course, you can say if I'm now thinking about the probability generating function of the aggregate claims distribution S, then I know it has to be like this. Now think about our quiz question from last week. But now I know that this Pn is in fact, you can put it together as a chain huh, of two probability generating functions that you're going to apply one after the other. But I can see this guy in magenta as the probability generating function of another aggregate sum, call that as one or something. So, so you see that I'm, I can here repetitively use this uh, pannier recursion first to get the distribution of S1, and then in the next step to use it again, but now combined with the um, probability generating function uh, P1, right? So the whole idea or the whole message about this point is that you can also re, um, repetitively use this, this scheme in case you're dealing with compound losses where the number of terms in the compound sum is constructed as a sort of advanced discrete distribution is constructed uh, with a compound uh, frequency distribution itself. 